All right, let's lock in. First thing that I want to talk about today is obviously what's making the most rounds in the news currently. And to all the Raiders fans who ran up that video, who said me and Noah were stupid and crazy and this, that, and the third, you're not even five weeks into the season. Antonio Pierce is a mess, liking things on Instagram, claiming that him and Tay, Tay said him and Antonio Pierce don't talk, um, calling out players. Business and, decisions. Business decisions. The Antonio Pierce era in Las Vegas, although they're two and two, is already completely under fire. And a big part of that and big thing that's going on currently is Tay Adams has requested a trade. He said he hurt his hamstring. Obviously, we all knew that was cap. And he has requested a trade. And his top two teams are apparently the Saints and the Jets. Um, First, I want to get your opinion on the situation and then i'm going to bring up some teams and get get your uh reaction to that to that so what do you think about the tay adams news and the raiders um i mean i feel like it was only a matter of time until he kind of figured out a way to get out of this situation um we could see periodically throughout the end of last year and then through the first few games this year that he just hasn't been happy in las vegas um so it's not really surprising. I know that this was that the Devontae Adams saga in Las Vegas was kind of like a situation that people were monitoring this offseason um, as potentially somebody that was going to be traded at a very at a point in the season. Um, and, and it probably came a little bit sooner than people imagined. Um, I think it's also worth noting here that. Um, before we get into like any of the potential landing spots or unrealistic landing spots, I think it's worth noting that as of today, a trade for Devonte Adams would be that team would be required to take on 13 and a half million dollars. And then that number would go down by just under a million each week that he's not traded. Um, that's according to over the cap. And then the uh, trade deadline is, is the 5th of November. So um, we have about a month until the official trade deadline. So I obviously think it happens before quicker that. Than that. Um, something of note, which I understand what you were doing here, but I want to see uh, I want to see what, so you said, yeah, the 13 million, but then 2025 yeah, the 2025 is significant. Goes up to... 30-some, and same thing in 26. Goes up to $35 million, and then yep. again, $35 million again. Um, so, yeah, that number that you said is true for this season, but taking on a 30... Uh, he would be age 33, age 34 season for Devontae Adams. He's going to be making $35 million a pop. Um, unless if you can get him to agree to tamper off that deal or like restructure it. But I don't see why you would restructure it if you're Tay. I mean, that's that's a lot of money. And it's it's quite literally your your last big contract in the NFL. Well, you could restructure it in a way that it doesn't hit the cap at 36 and 35 in those two years. Um, it would have to be a pretty significant restructure, but it can be done. But I'm th I'm just saying strictly from his his salary standpoint, I don't see him being like flexible. This is his last big contract. Um, he probably wants every dollar of it. Is that fair? I agree. Say? Yeah, yeah, I completely yeah. agree with you. Um, but um, restructuring it doesn't mean that you would necessarily lose that money. Um, well, it could. it could. It could. It's not yeah. a. It's not a guarantee, though. But I don't think he's going to have a choice because he doesn't have a no trade clause, so he can go wherever. But I would assume a lot of these teams coming into that would would um, want some type of confirmation that he's willing to work on a re like to work on a restructured deal um prior to them trading for him 
Otherwise, yeah, I don't know. absolutely no sense to, for any of these teams, even if you, they need a wide receiver to trade for him. Well, ultimately, that's what we're about to do is just talk about, like, I have two teams that I think are absolutely unrealistic, and then I have two teams that think that it makes a ton of sense. Um, so that's that's really the conversation. Yes, you're right. A lot of these teams are not going to be in the market for Tay Adams. That's the point. Um, yep. So I think that, like, I really think that there's only a few teams that are even in question, and I think everybody else we can pretty much throw out. Um, the first two that I don't know if, like, we talk about this a lot. I don't know if it's, like, the media just, like, loving the fact that, like, talking about the Buffalo Bills and talking about the, the Kansas City Chiefs get the most clicks, but it makes absolutely zero sense for the Chiefs to go and trade for Tay Adams. First, first thing of note, they are the Raiders and the Chiefs are in the same division. Why would they trade an interdivision rival, like arguably like the, one of the best receivers of like the 2010s, the late 2010s, um, who are going for a three P in their own division? Next, the Chiefs have invested so much resources into their wide receiver position. They spent a first on Rasheed Rice. They spent a first on Xavier Worthy. They go out and get a Hollywood Brown. I They pay like Noah Gray. They pay K Travis Kelsey for their tight end room. That's a lot of – they already have invested a lot of resources into their into their room. Um, it may have – it might not look great right now because of injury, but like I don't see them – for seeing them wanting to spend more resources on a really expensive old wide receiver, it just doesn't really make too much sense for to me at least on the other side of things, the bills just got out of the business of Stefan Diggs. They didn't want to pay a 30 plus year old expensive ass wide receiver and wanted to shift their offensive identity to something different than having a number one wide receiver. So why in the world would they go and trade for De Devontae Adams? Both of those teams make absolutely zero sense to me. And of course the media is extremely annoying and that's the only two teams that they have really brought up and the ones that of note. And I think it's just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. I actually have both of those teams on my unrealistic spots for basically the same reason that you did. Um, whenever one of those two teams doesn't have a number one wide receiver and there is a disgruntled wide receiver that is looking to be traded, they're automatically going to get brought up in discussions. Um, so that's just like something that is going to happen until Mahomes and Josh Allen are no longer in the NFL. Um, another team that I have on here for an unrealistic spot that Tay Adams, I don't know if he directly came out and said it, but I don't think it's realistic for him to go to the Saints either. Um Real quick, and I'm sorry, you can keep talking. Uh, the Chiefs would have a wide receiver one if it wasn't for that dumbass Patrick Mahomes Correct. running like a four-year-old into yeah. Rasheed Rice's knee. But go ahead, keep going. Yeah, I mean, I can go back to that for a second too. You're completely right with the with both points that you made. the The Buffalo Bills just got out of a situation where they are no longer number one receiver; they are wide receiver by committee. And although they just got stomped by the Ravens, it's worked out pretty well for them thus far. Um, Chiefs, like you said, they've they've put in a ton of money to to this wide receiver room, um, and a Rasheed Rice, a healthy Rasheed Rice, moving forward is ultimately going to be better than a 33, 34 year old um, Devontae Adams. I completely agree. Um, but yeah, back to my point about the Saints. One of the things that I think Devontae Adams said is he wants to go and play for a team where he knows where he's played with the quarterback. So that really rules it down to two teams in the yeah. Jets and the the Saints. I don't think the Saints are a realistic situation because of how limited they are in their cap situation. This year they only have 3.2 million in cap space. They might I like Rich, I like Chris Olave and um shit, who's the other guy? Rashid Shahid. Rashid, Rashid Shahid. But I don't think that them putting Devontae Adams in this situation is going to make them a legitimate Super Bowl contender. And if you're going to be stuck with him 
at that number for 25 and 26, it makes no sense to me, especially if their cap space this year is only at 3.2 million. That's going to take a lot of restructuring internally in order for him to just fit for this season. Um, Have you considered, have you considered that the saints are incredibly stupid? I don't asking. think I have, and that led me to my thought of I don't think they're smart enough to be able to restructure and open up enough cap space for Devontae Adams for this season. That's fair, but I will say that it would be like the least shocking thing ever for the the Saints who started off the season well, but I think are going to tamper off for them to go and get like Devontae Adams. It would make the most sense, like because they're just make a dumb decision. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. I don't um, think they're even smart enough to get to making the dumb decision. Um, no, I agree with that. So I think there's a ton of teams that we can rule out. Uh, Steelers, uh, like why, why I actually, would he, why would he I actually go have that? I actually have the Steelers on my teams that I could see him going to. And I have, I have a so couple reasons you, why you, so the reason, all right, real quick, the reason that he doesn't want to play in Vegas is because he doesn't have a quarterback that can throw him the football. And then the first week that he rolls out with the Pittsburgh Steelers and he has three catches for 20 yards, he's literally going to erupt. I look at it this way because he doesn't have that no trade clause. So if the Steelers offer what the Raiders are looking for, and I think they were looking for what, like a second round pick. If the Steelers are dumb enough to go out there and offer a second round pick to the Raiders for Devontae Adams, go for it. See, I this is what this is where I think this is what I personally think. Tay has two teams he wants to play for. That's it. The Steelers like, also it, need another receiver. But it so doesn't, that's the only other reason. Well, they like, but this is what I'm saying. Tay won't play football. He's not playing football right now. Like if he if he goes to a team that he if there's a team that wants to trade for him and it gets out, he could quite literally just be like, Yeah, I'm not playing for you guys. Like that that he for, he has a ton of leverage in this situation. He doesn't want to play for the Raiders and he only wants to play for two teams. Like, so I, I think that it's really it's that simple. Like, I think that his agent obviously is involved. And I think that like if somebody like like if the Panthers were like, yep, we'll trade a second for for you right now. He'll just be like, OK, like I just won't play football. And I think the Steelers are on that list of where he's just like, I'm not going to play football if that's who I have to play for. What is like the weekly fine for not playing? I just or don't can you think just he keep ca- saying you can. Can you just keep saying like, yeah, I'm hurt. I just don't think he cares. I don't know the situation fully, but like, I just don't think he gives a shit. Like he is in the window now where he just like I am yeah. playing he the wants last to go and win. Yeah. one to two to three years of my career. Like I need to go and win. Like I'm not in this and I and I want to have eight to ten targets a game. That's the that's the issue. Like it's not like, oh, like I want to play winning football and like and like be a part of a good team and like do this, this that in the third. No, like Tay wants to get fed the ball 14 times in a game. Like that's what he wants to do. So I, I really, I think that like whatever mold that looks like um, is, is what it is. Um, the two teams that I have written down here are the Ravens and the Jets. Um, the Ravens, I think is a little bit more far fetched, but the Jets, Joe Douglas, your, your job is on the clock. If you guys do not go to an AFC championship game this year, you are fired spend the second round pick fuck throw in a fourth round pick too because if you don't win this year you're not going to be there to use those picks anyway so go yeah. out get tay that's where he wants to go that's where aaron Rodgers wants him to be the whole team during the preseason was talking about tay coming to new york Brees hall said it in an interview Rodgers said it tay said it in an interview uh it's the most obvious link up of all time it's really just about them pulling the trigger and if you are joe douglas and the jets what why not i mean like if you do not win a super bowl this year that whole building's fired or if you're not in an afc championship or win a playoff game that building is gone yeah win a playoff game is probably the bare minimum, bare minimum. yeah the bare minimum there um 
I actually had the Ravens on here as an unrealistic spot because their GM just came out what not too long ago and was like, it would be really tough for us to go in here and add another contract in this um, in their current situation. Um, I just think that if your GM's coming out and saying that, then it's probably not probably not going to happen. But it could be smoke and mirrors because I do. If if I wouldn't have seen that report, I would completely agree with you that the Ravens would be a legitimate landing spot for them or well, for just, him. But he also isn't going to get 14 targets a game there either. I think that the Ravens, I just think it's a little different. Like, I think he'll get fed more there because they need, they desperately need a wide out, obviously. Um, and on top of that, like, the Ravens are already big game hunting. Like, they went out and got Derrick Henry. Like, it wouldn't shock me if they went out and got Tay Adams, too, and just, like, fuck it. Like, we're going to give Lamar, like, two two serious weapons and just, like, see what happens and, like, say, screw it. Because um, I think the Ravens are starting to feel a little bit of heat as well from, from like, getting it done, like, in the postseason. Um, another team that obviously is, like, Dallas Cowboys. For uh, realistic or unrealistic? Realistic. Like, I have them I, as an unrealistic team. I think that this offseason, like – Jerry Jones got like absolutely rolled through the mud. Um, he didn't get Derrick Henry, which was like obviously like a massive, massive mistake. And then now he's just like sitting there and has just been getting clowned ever since he said that he was all in. And I could see them very realistically being like, all right, fuck it. Like we're going to go get Tay and then figure this out, everything out later. Um, so that those are the three teams that I could see it happening with or the Ravens the Cowboys and then the Jets. Um, I think probably the Ravens are third on that list and then the Jets are first and then the Cowboys are second. But that's really who the three teams who I think are in the market for Tay right now. Because they're the teams that are like, if you look at those, the way that they're set up is like, we need to win a Super Bowl. Like we have the team to do it, especially the Cowboys. Like the Cowboys are like desperate to get over the hump. Um, and I just think that those three teams kind of fit the mold for who, who, who Tay would also want to play for as well. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I'm looking at it from kind of like a, like you're looking at it through like the desperation, like we need this player lens, I think, which I think that's very fair. Um, the Cowboys and the Ravens both fit the mold as two teams that would benefit immediately from having another like really good wide receiver in Devontae Adams. Um, the reason I had the Cowboys as an unrealistic team is because um, they just paid CD. They just paid Dak. They're going to have to figure out how to pay Micah Parsons. Um, so I don't think from like a draft capital standpoint, um, it's in their best interest necessarily to go and, and trade away pieces that they can use in the draft because I think that they're going to have to realistically rely heavily on the draft these next few years because of how expensive those three guys are going to be on their team are going to be in the next couple of years. But other than that, I mean, I, I, I think like money aside, the Cowboys fit. Mon they, they have the money to do it over the next three seasons. Um, and so do the Ravens. I'm just telling you what their GM said. I, I'm just Ra looking. Ravens. I'm looking. I know, I know they all do. Yeah, I know I'm that they all right have now. the cap space to do it. Everybody's I able think, to do it. I just think that, like, I, I think that, like, what we're talking about right now is, like, like, this is, like, I don't know where Tay's at in his career personally, but this is, like, adding – like a potential top 10 wide receiver to your team, which I ultimately don't think that matters as much as everybody else does. But for those teams listed, I think it matters a ton. I have a, um, a dark horse team. And I, I told you earlier that I was at the Rosillo show last night and um, I didn't say this part, but Chris long was there for like the entire show. Um, and the Devonte Adams situation came up and Chris long provided two teams that, um, neither one of us have mentioned yet. So, and I want to see like what you think. 
So the two teams that he mentioned outside of the guys that we already did were the Commanders and the Lions. Yeah, I heard I heard that as well. I heard multiple people say that. Um, the Lions, like we'll talk about it on the Monday Night Recap. Like what what? I just feel like what? Why interrupt the chemistry? Um, I agree. And the Commanders, the only point that I have in that situation is like their timelines are off. Like Tay, like like I like I'm getting at. Like I keep saying, like Tay wants to play for a quarterback that he knows, which is two, and he wants to win a Super Bowl. The Commanders aren't close, aren't going to be close to winning a Super Bowl, and second. It's a quarterback that they don't know. The reasoning why I have quarterbacks on my list, such as like Dak and Lamar, is because they're proven Proven. veterans that have done it for years and years and know that like Tay knows what he's getting out of those guys. I think that if you told Tay that he was going to the commanders from the Raiders, it would be the exact, it would be a lateral move in his mind. So I, I don't think that, he would go to the commanders. I'm just trying to put myself into the commander's front office as to why you would make that trade. And the only thing that I came up with was they think they're much further ahead of schedule. And they think that Jaden Daniels is in fact the real deal. And the rest of the NFC East um, looks bad. And they feel like they have a legitimate shot if they go out there and they add another um, significant weapon to this offense. A legitimate That's the shot only thing at I, winning the division, winning the division, and maybe winning a playoff game. I, that would be the again, only possible I, reason again, as to why I think that they would would go out there and make this move. Um, but other than that, I I can't I, think. Of I'm not looking else. at. I'm just not looking at this from team perspective, like the team's point of view. This is what Tay Adams wants. This isn't. I know. This isn't like oh like. Let's get like, uh, oh, like shit. Like, let's go grab him because he'll be good for our young quarterback. Like, it's like Tay will be like, I'm not playing there. That's really what I think is going on right now. Fair. Yeah. I mean, that's I, what he's doing in Vegas. Like, he's yeah. doing the exact same thing in Vegas. Like, you guys suck. We don't have a shot. I'm not playing here. Like, the commanders, like, I view that they might be off to a hot start. Jaden Daniels might be the real deal. All of the above. But, like, nobody is looking at the commanders as like a Super Bowl team right now, like at all. And they least not through four weeks. No. Yeah. I, 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 I'm glad that you looked at it through Devonte Adams and I was more so looking at it through like the player or through like the team perspective, because I think that far too often we don't really like, like people don't really take into consideration like both sides of things. Um, so I'm glad you looked at it that he's just way. A, he's just the only reason I'm saying all this is like I don't believe in the empowerment in player the player empowerment in the NFL that heavy. But when you have a 32 year old wide receiver who is going to make 13 mil next year, his age 33 season is going to make 35. His age 34 season is going to make 35. It's just a completely different situation than like let's say a Brandon Ayuk situation where if you look at Brandon Ayuk. He was literally like, I'll play for three teams. I'll play for the Steelers. I'll play for, I forget the other team at this time, or the 49ers. And everybody else is pretty much out of the race. And that was somebody who was in their mid-20s, who was not on a contract, who knew that he had to get paid. This is somebody on an expensive contract who, and I really, like, everybody's sitting around and saying, like, it's going to be a second. It's going to be a second. Um I think that they're comparing it to like the digs deal. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. And that's what um, I think the Raiders like tossed out there as what they were I looking think for. He's gonna it's go, not going to end up being a second. I think he's going to go for significantly less. And you'll see like fans of teams being like, oh, why did we, swindled. why did, why did we not grab Tay for a four? Correct. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like that kind of shit where like, it always happens. Like we were like, wait, what? Like, Okay, so the Raiders will fold because nobody's going to actually give them a second round pick for a 31 about to be 32 year old with double the salary hit in the next two years. Yeah. And somebody I listened to somebody today say 
well, the, the Chiefs should just offer their first because it's going to be number thirty-two anyway, and like just give them the get just give them the first. Like, that's so lazy. That's such I'm a like, lazy. Take. I'm like, why, why in the world would the Raiders trade Tay Adams? To the like, like nobody that's is not sitting around and like trying to do the Chiefs any favors. Like, not at all. Not at all. I um, another team that I had on here uh, as unrealistic that I was seeing like getting tossed around as potential was was the Chargers. Um, they could use a wide receiver, but like it doesn't fit for them either. Like they're trying they got, to eliminate all this dead cap space. Like they just got rid of space. Yeah, like they yeah. just got rid of two old expensive wide receivers. Why would yeah. the in the first five weeks of the season they go and add the same thing? It just I thought the same thing when I saw it. I was like, that makes stupid. no sense. And then the last thing I want to talk about, and then we can move it on move on is just the trade market in general. Like I'm I'm hearing like Deontay Johnson's gonna get moved, Christian Kirk's gonna get moved, DeAndre Hopkins is gonna get moved. That never happens in the middle of the season ever. Maybe, maybe one of those guys will get moved. Maybe. maybe. And so I don't understand why. Like I think like the NFL media is trying to make it kind of like what the NBA media is Correct. because the NBA media obviously is like blessed with an active trade line, but at the trade deadline. But we talk about this all the time inserting somebody into an offense mid season is way harder than people think coming back full circle is exactly why I think Tay just goes to the jets because he knows so the exact offense that they're running him and Rogers have amazing chemistry already. It's not something that needs to get taught and he can walk in there week one and be an impact player for them. I think that's the only team that makes full sense. And I think that that's ultimately what we watch go down. Yeah, I, I completely agree. They were my number one landing spot. They have the draft capital. They have the cap space. Um, they meet the criteria of, did Devontae Adams play with his quarterback before? Um, I think it's just a matter of time until we see that um, that trade trade happen. White clouds blowing out when we max Four, five, not the size, but it kick up, kick up, highlight. Of my life, man, it